Greetings fellow Pagan Pals, Bella Rosa here and I'm showing you some tips and tricks for every witch so let's get started. Tea light candles are easy to come by. They're small and make great cleansing candles but they never come in black to use as protection candles. Instead they're mainly available as taper candles and that could be challenging if you don't have enough space on your altar. But that won't be a problem for long. Bring a small amount of water to boil and reduce to a medium flame. Then take an empty soda can, remove the top with the can opener and place the can in the water with the broken pieces of the taper candle. Don't worry about the wick, you can fish it out later if you wish with a plastic fork. Next, take tea light candles and pop them out of the mold. Now we have containers for our wax. I have some votive cotton wicks that I purchase at my local craft store and I'm hot gluing them down at the center of my molds. The wax is melted and ready to pour. Squeeze the can to make a lip for easy pouring. And be sure to keep something in the center so the wicks have a surface to lean on while they firm up. Consider making these in bulk and keep the can for later melts. As for the leftover wax, save them for candle making or keeping them for carving and anointing for spells that require candle wax. Since taper candles often come in a variety of colors, you can also melt them down for quarter candles or spell candles. If you go through a lot of citrus, why not use the skins for offering bowls? Here I'm using grapefruit and lemon, which are good for big and small offerings. Be sure to trim the points of the ends of the lemons so that they can sit flat on a surface. These citrus bowls are biodegradable, which is great if you tend to leave your offerings outside, plus they can hold your liquids like juice or milk. This juice blend is a potent combo in spell work if you're looking to open the heart, bring about optimism, or get a burst of creative energy. Snag some of the lemon juice separately if you're looking to rid a negative influence. Store the rinds in a freezer safe zip black bag and since we're at the altar a tried and true tip is to use birthday candles for spell work or representing the elements they're often found in a wide variety of colors are compact and inexpensive other tricks to tip your witch's hat to include using a dollar tree wine glass as a chalice buying cheap and inexpensive spices for spell work and turning a letter opener into an athame Witches cupboards take many forms like craft box, toolbox, or a shoe box, but how about a locking box or a makeup box? They're super durable and already finished, so you can use them right away. We're not taking a peek inside this one just yet. I'll be reorganizing this witchy box in an upcoming video. Men's dress shirts come with all sorts of extras like pins, which are great to keep if you're practicing sympathetic magic like crafting poppets. Mr. Hobby loves his dress shirts, so I have plenty of pins for later use. The allure of burning a huge sage bundle can be quite tempting, but you're often left with a half-burnt bundle of leaves with a less desirable scent that stays with the whole bundle. Combat this by separating the pieces and burning them as you need them. Place one of the stems into an organza bag with a lighter or matches to have as an on-the-go cleansing pouch that you can put into your purse or your car. The smoke for smudging smaller bundles provides enough billowy goodness for any ritual making your larger sage bundle last even longer. Subscribe now, become a Pagan Pal, like up this video, and I'll see you next time for another episode of My Pagan Pal Crafts and Such. Bye!